In this video, I will show you the initial setup of 40 Gate 40 OS version 7.4 and above. Starting from 40 OS version 7.4, you are required to complete the initial setup before you can configure the FortiGate device. I just factory reset this 40 gate device and then upgraded to version 7.4. Every time we factory reset the device or newly out of the box, the default IP address is 192.168.1.99. Every time you see this page, just tick advance then tick proceed. Let's now log into the device. The default username is admin with no password. Tick login. We are required to change the password. Old password is blank so we need only to input our new password. For this demo, I will use admin as my password. Confirm the new password then tick OK. The admin username and password is only for demo or lab activities. Don't ever use the admin username and password on the actual device for security purposes. We need to log in again. The default username is admin and input the new password which in my case is admin. We are now going to set up the FortiGate device. Click Begin. If it is a new device and if you already plugged in the WAN interface so the device can access the internet then you will be asked to register with FortiCare. If you just upgraded the firmware from older versions then this register with FortiCare step will not be shown. If it's a new device then you need to log in using your account. Input your FortiNet username and password. Next is the country or region. Enter your reseller. You can scroll down or use the search box. Next is the end user type. Choose non-government or government. You have the option to allow administrative login using 40 Cloud SSO. I'm not going to use this feature so I will disable it. Click OK to log in. If you don't have an account then you can create an account now. Alternatively, we can skip this step and then register the device later on. We will be asked if we want to migrate config with 40 care. I will show you how to use the 40 converter in the next video. For now, we will tick don't show again then tick later to proceed. Next is the automatic patch upgrades. If we choose to enable automatic updates then it will regularly check for available patches. Take note that the firmware upgrade process will automatically reboot the device so the network will be down for a few minutes. We have the option to set the upgrade schedule we can delay by the number of days. If we choose 10 then the firmware upgrade will be automatically executed after 10 days of the new patch release date. We also have the option to set the time to execute the upgrade process. If you want to enable the automatic patch update then make sure to choose the time when no one is connected to the network, or else they will be disconnected. You can choose the time you prefer. Once everything is set then choose save and continue. We also have the option to specify the day when we want to enable automatic patch upgrades. You can choose the day you prefer and also the time. If everything is set then choose save and continue. I recommend this option for home or small businesses. However, for enterprises, I usually disable the automatic upgrades, I had to test first the new firmware, if stable then only I execute the firmware upgrade manually. Tick save and continue to proceed. If we disable the automatic firmware upgrade then we need to acknowledge that the 40 gate will not automatically update when a new firmware patch is available. Tick acknowledge then tick OK to proceed. Next is the dashboard setup. If we choose optimal then only the popular default dashboard and 40 view monitors will be shown. If we choose comprehensive then a set of dashboard and all the 40 view monitors will be available. We can modify the dashboard and 40 view monitors after this setup. Click OK to apply the changes. You can watch what's new in 40 OS 7.4. To permanently disable this window, tick Don't Show again then click OK to proceed. Now we are at the dashboard. For this demo, we are using this 40 Gate 60F. The firmware version is 7.4.2. During the dashboard setup, we choose the comprehensive setup so we have all these 40 view monitors available. If you are new to 40 gate then these features are very useful for troubleshooting and monitoring purposes. We can add or delete any of these 40 view monitors. To delete, click on the actions or the three dots icon. We have the option to edit, delete, and add to favorites. 
Since we are going to delete then choose delete. Tick OK to confirm. We can delete multiple 40 view monitors if we want. To add a new 40 view monitor. Tick on the plus sign or add monitor. We can choose any of these features available. We can view it by category. We have the 40 view. Security fabric. Network which have a lot of useful monitoring. We also have system monitor. Security. User and authentication. And Wi-Fi. To add monitor. Simply click on it. You can modify the time period based on your preference. Once done, click OK to apply the changes. You can now see the newly added monitor. Asset Inventory Monitor will show you all the connected devices on the network but you need also to enable it on the interfaces. Let's check the interfaces. For these entry-level appliances, it's already pre-configured with a very basic configuration just for the devices to access the internet. The WAN or WAN 1 interfaces are configured DHCP by default so once you plug a cable into it, the 40 gate device can automatically access the internet. The same goes with the LAN, once you connect any device to any of the LAN ports then they can access the internet. But of course, the default gateway would be 192.168.1.99 which is the default configuration. Example is my laptop which is on DHCP and it is connected to the LAN port. If we check the network status, my laptop automatically receives the IP address of 192.168.1.100 and the gateway which is 192.168.1.99. On top of that, if we check the firewall policy, we can see the default firewall policy configuration. This is a very basic policy just to translate LAN data traffic to the internet. You can see the source which is the internal interface with a gateway of 192.168.1.99 with slash 24 subnet mask. Also, the interface members of LAN which are ports 1 to port 5. The destination interface which is the WAN 1 interface which is currently on DHCP. Destination is all or anything on the internet. Scheduled to always or anytime. Services to all, this means all services are allowed. Action is accept or allow, and of course, NAT is enabled because this policy is to access the internet. Again, this is a very basic policy, with no restrictions, no limitations, and no scheduling. Let's do a test, we will open the command prompt. We will try to ping google.com which we can. This means we are able to access internet. We can also open a browser then access any website. Let's test to access 40net.com which we can. If you are new to 40 gate firewall then you can check my playlist. 40 gate firewall configuration step by step. This will help you understand more about the 40 net 40 gate firewall. After you watch the playlist then you can configure a 40 gate firewall from scratch. Well, that's all for today's demonstration and I really hope you liked this video. If you are new to my channel, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe and click on the notification bell for more amazing tutorials. Thank you and see you in the next video.